I'm Sammy Kunz. I'm from Switzerland, from Frauenfeld, and I'm a quadriplegic. I had my accident 10 years ago when I fell into a river at head first. In the beginning, it was really hard for me actually to not give up. I had bad thoughts, but I needed time. I needed friends. I read more, I study more, and I try to yeah, use my brain more because my body is not available to me anymore. One of the things that Sammy really needs, along with the 15% of the world's population living with a disability, is better and more affordable assistive technology that makes everyday life easier. And what better way to advance those areas of research than a full-on Cyborg Olympics? Welcome to Cybathlon 2024. This is the crowd, this is the arena, and this is what it's all about. 67 teams from 24 countries are competing across eight disciplines. Each is an obstacle course full of everyday tasks that disabled people have to deal with. Amongst others, there are races for robotic legs, motorized wheelchairs, and full-on exoskeletons. Sammy's competing in the robotic assistance race. Now, let's meet a couple of other pilots from the other disciplines. My name is Salome, and I am going to compete in the vision race. I'm on column. I'm competing in the brain computer interface as their pilot. What's interesting here is different teams have designed very different kit for each course. For example, while most of Sammy's opponents will be using robot arms attached to their wheelchairs, he's turned up with two faithful friends called Dingo and Donkey. As I can't use my hands, I need assistance from other people. And in this race, we actually have tasks to solve with the robot. We develop a robot dog with a gripper on top and with my joystick that I navigate through this course and try to solve those problems as well as possible. The dogs are manually controlled by sucking and blowing into something called a quad stick, which was originally designed as a gaming joystick. Now, controlling two robots does seem much more versatile, but also way more complicated than a simpler single robot arm. And talking of mental agility, for Owen, it's all about his brain. His event requires him to control virtual objects just by thinking. It's not all about aggression and power. It's about having a calm demeanor at the right times, be focused, get your brain levels down to where they should be at. So we're measuring EEG or electroencephalogram, commonly known as brain waves. Uh, this measures tiny electrical impulses in the brain. And so what we're trying to do is ask Owen to regulate that brain activity by imagining movement. So you might imagine right arm movement for one command and left arm movement for another. However, we have a more complex controller where, where we can collect up to six commands just by two imagined movements. We can translate that into a movement of a cursor or a bar. What we're trying to achieve is kind of perfect control. But uh, that's not e that's easier said than done. I have eight minutes to perform ten challenges with the help of a device that was uh, created by the team. That device consists of a camera to detect Salome's environment and a moving handle that guides her towards objects and around obstacles. The trickiest one is the one where I have to walk on a path and my foot cannot uh, leave the path even if it's only one or two centimetres. The teams are getting ready for the main events. But regardless of how they perform here, the hope is that Cybathlon will encourage researchers and disabled people to continue collaborating long after the competition has finished. I love this device. I really hope that after the Cybathlon, the team is going to continue working on it because it is great. I would love to have one of these robots at home, actually, because when I need it, it would do something for me, like giving me something to eat, to drink, um, pick something up from the floor. 
and if I had this robot, it would give me um, more um, independence.